Today, I've got a problem from Cambridge University's STEP exam, and it involves evaluating an integral. And this is such a cool method of evaluating an integral. Um, I really want, want to share this with you. I was solving this problem. I was like, ah, this is this is really, really satisfying. OK, um, so let's let's read out the whole problem. I'm not going to be solving every single part in depth because uh, that would make the video a bit too long. So the bits that I think are a little bit boring, I'll leave to you to verify for yourself. So part one, we want to show that sec squared of a quarter pi minus a half x is two over one plus sine x. Hence, integrate one over one plus sine x with respect to x. Part two, by means of the substitution y equals pi minus x, show that the integral from naught to pi of x, f of sine x dx, equals pi over two times the integral from naught to pi of f of sine x dx where f is a function for which this integral exists. Hence, evaluate the integral from naught to pi of x over 1 plus sine x dx. And part three, the most interesting part, evaluate the integral from naught to pi of 2x cubed minus 3 pi x squared all over 1 plus sine x squared dx. OK, so just before we actually dive in, just for a bit of background for those of you who might not be familiar, Cambridge uh, University in the UK uh, have students sit this step exam in order to get an offer from uh, Cambridge or to get a place from Cambridge. You've got to score well in this step exam. And in terms of how the questions are normally structured, they're a bit like this. where they will have multiple parts. And broadly speaking, part N plus one will be somewhat dependent on part N or perhaps even previous parts as well. Um, so here the idea is, like they're not they wouldn't ever just give you this integral by itself um the, the previous parts are going to help us evaluate this integral so we just want to bear that in mind okay let's dive right in so this first bit i'm not going to actually show this is pretty straightforward you just um uh, you know kind of expand sec squared a quarter pi minus a half x uh using perhaps some various double angle or compound angle formula and um, that sort of thing so i'll leave that as maybe an exercise for yourself um so i'm going to skip to this bit hence integrate one over one plus sine x we see the word hence and we see that in this result here we've got uh, one over one plus sine x so we get therefore the integral of one over one plus sine x dx is just equal to a half times the integral of sec squared of a quarter pi minus a half x dx and thankfully, this is a very nice integral or sec squared integrates to tan. So this is just going to equal minus tan of a quarter pi minus a half x plus ooh, plus c. So it's supposed to be a plus c there. There we go. Um, awesome. Cool. So that's what that would be. That's part one. Part two, by means of the substitution y equals pi minus x, let's show that this is true. In fact, again, I won't answer this part as well. This bit's very nice if you've not seen this idea before. It's using something which I believe is sometimes called the King's Rule. Um, I'm not sure if that's the official name or just a, a, tame, a name that some people go uh, call it by. Uh, but it's a very, very nice trick. So if you've not seen this before, do go through the steps to try and prove this. It's a very, very nice, um, nice little trick. Anyway. Uh, and then from this, we want to evaluate the integral from naught to pi of x over 1 plus sine x dx. Again, it starts with hence. We know we're going to use this result. So if we think about this, we've just shown that the integral from naught to pi of x times a function of sine x dx equals pi over 2, which is just a constant, times the integral from naught to pi of f of sine x dx. So what does this mean to me? This basically means that if I have a function which is x times a function of sine x, I can, broadly speaking, boil that down to just the function of sine x. And so here I've got x multiplied by a function of sine x. So just to make that explicitly clear, this is x multiplied by 1 over 1 plus sine x dx. So according to this rule we've just proved, this is equal to pi over 2 times the integral from 0 to pi of 1 over 1 plus sine x dx. And lo and behold, we can use our part 1 to help us because we integrated 1 over 1 plus sine x, um, which is this thing here. So this is going to be pi over 2 times minus tan of a quarter pi minus a half x like so and then the limits being pi and zero and if i remember correctly when you go away and evaluate this you get the number pi um yeah that checks out so when you plug in pi into this you get a quarter pi minus a half pi which is a negative quarter pi so that will with this minus one in front will give you one and then with the zero you get tan of a quarter pi which is uh, uh also uh one so you get uh sorry Yeah, so, so yeah, sorry, it should be one. So it should be two. So pi over two times two gives you pi. Um, okay, okay, cool. Um, so we get something like this. Um, let's look at the last part now. So we want to evaluate the integral from naught to pi of 2x cubed minus 3 pi x squared over 1 plus sine x squared dx. 
Now, we can't quite use this same rule up here, at least immediately, because it's not quite easy to write this in the form x times f of sine x. I could factor out an x from the numerator, but then annoyingly, I'm still left with other x terms in the numerator. I'll have like a quadratic in terms of x. Hmm. So how do we approach this? So when I was playing around with this, there's a few different things you can try. Um, but my first thought was, well, what if I de derive a similar rule like this, but with x squared and x cubed? So I thought, okay, what if I do the integral from 0 to pi of x squared times f of sine x dx? Does that give me anything nice? So I do the same substitution, y equals pi minus x. And it turns out you can't really get anything there because basically using the king's, or if you try and do something with the king's rule, you're going to get the same integral on the right-hand side. So they'll end up cancelling out instead of adding up. So that's not that great. But what we can do conveniently is do x cubed because 3 is an odd number. So just before I dive into this, I'm just going to introduce some notation here. Um, so I'm going to let, oh, sorry, let i subscript k just equal the integral from 0 to pi of x to the k times f of sine x dx. And what I want to do is get a rule a bit like this. So this rule basically says that i1 is equal to pi over 2 i of 0. Now, what I want is a rule that involves i3, because here I've got an x cubed. And so I want to get um, a, a rule that involves x uh, i3. So i3 is the integral from 0 to pi of x to the k, uh, or x cubed, f of sine x, dx. And now what I want to do is do a substitution. So I'm going to do the substitution u equals pi minus x, um, or y equals pi minus x, same as before. And I'm going to skip a couple of steps here. And you're going to get the integral from 0 to pi of pi minus y cubed f of sine of y dy. And now the beauty of this is I can use the binomial expansion to expand pi minus y cubed. And if I think about what I'll get, I'm going to get pi cubed times i0 minus pi, uh, 3 pi squared times i1 plus 3 pi times i2 minus i3, like so. Um, so that's just from expanding this and then kind of splitting this into four different integrals. Okie dokie, great. And this, remember, is all equal to i3. And now the beauty of this is if I bring the, two, the i3 to the left-hand side and the i2, I get 2i3 minus 3 pi i2 is equal to pi cubed i0 minus 3 pi squared i1. Okay, why is this useful at all? Well, if you notice here, they've given us 2 times x cubed minus 3 pi times x squared, which very, very conveniently matches up with what we have here. And so therefore, according to what we've proved, this integral, let me just call it j, I can say that therefore j is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of pi cubed, so or, or i naught, sorry, so that would be pi cubed times i naught, which is, well, just 1 over sine of x squared dx, and then minus 3 pi squared times i1. So the integral from 0 to pi of x over 1 plus sine x squared dx, like so. Okay, this is very nice. Um, does this simplify the problem? Well, you might think, okay, well, I can maybe kind of bring these constants inside the integral, bring them together, and then it will have the same fraction and do something with that. But then you're still left with fundamentally a linear function of x divided by 1 plus sine x squared dx. And it doesn't seem like there's any nice way really to deal with that. Except what we can do now is actually turn this x over 1 plus sine x squared back into a constant divided by 1 plus sine x squared using this rule we had from earlier. So we can use this rule again, but down here on this integral. And this will be really nice because then we're just going to have a constant, if I combine these two integrals, some constant divided by 1 plus sine x squared dx. Okay, so let's do that. So this thing here, according to this rule that I've circled up here, this integral, if I keep everything else the same, will become so minus 3 pi squared times pi over 2 times the integral from 0 to pi of 1 over 1 plus sine of x squared dx. Amazing. 
now I can kind of factor out this coefficient, which is pi cubed minus three pi cubed over two. So in other words, minus uh, pi cubed over two. And then I've got the integral from naught to pi of one over one plus sine x squared dx. Great, this is really, really useful. So this integral j, the thing we're trying to work out is equal to minus pi cubed over two times this thing here. Now, how on earth do we evaluate this integral? Well, the trick is to look back at what we did in part one. We worked out that two over one plus sine x is this. So if I just square both sides and divide by four, I'm gonna get one over one plus sine x squared. And it's gonna equal sec to the power of four times something divided by four. And then I, before I actually dive into writing all that out, I need to think, is that possible to integrate? The answer is yes, because sec to the four of u is the same as uh, one plus tan squared of u times sec squared of u. And then I can do a substitution involving tan u because the derivative of tan of u is sec squared of u. And so this should work out quite nicely. Um, so this is going to equal minus pi cubed over eight. So if I bring out that factor of four times the integral from naught to pi of sec to the four, let me remember what was inside, pi over four minus a half x dx, like so. Another question is, well, how do we evaluate this? And so before I do the trig, like uh, identity stuff, I'm just going to make this a little bit nicer. I'm going to make this u. So I'm going to say let u equal pi over 4 minus half x. It's not necessary, but I think it just makes it a little bit uh, neater. And so I get du is minus a half dx. And so again, kind of using some similar tricks from before, I might skip a few steps here. This is going to equal the integral from minus pi over 4 to pi over 4 of uh, sec squared uh, of sorry two sec squared of u du and so if I bring that two out to the front that's just going to become a four there like so um, so we get minus pi q over four times this integral here so sec to the four of u du and again I'm going to use a nice little trick here this is integrating a an even function over a symmetric integral uh, interval sorry so I can write this as minus pi cubed over two times the integral from naught to pi over four of sec to the four of u du. Again, if, you've not, if you're not really sure why that's true, think about what I think about sketching this graph and why the fact that it's an even function means I can do this. Um, and then now, now I'm just gonna integrate this. So minus pi cubed over two, this is now the integral naught to pi over four, oh gosh, of one plus tan squared u times sec squared of u du. And this is nice and easy to integrate. This is minus pi cubed over two times tan of u uh, plus a third tan cubed of u from pi over four to zero. Thankfully, when you plug in zero, you get zero. When you plug in pi over four, uh, tan of pi over four is one. So you're just going to get minus pi cubed over two times four thirds, which is minus two pi cubed over three. And that there is the value of our integral. A really, really nice result, if you ask me, using a really, really nice trick and kind of using it multiple times in a really elegant way. This question becomes obviously a lot more difficult if I change this two here to a four or something or any other number, basically, because, of course, this trick here kind of works out really, really nicely that we got two minus three pi here, um, which is kind of required for this integral. But a very, very nice trick nonetheless. Um, and that's what step problems are about, where you get a really, really difficult problem, which makes for a great thumbnail. Uh, when well, you st stick that on the thumbnail and people go, how on earth do you solve that? And the, the thing is, they'll never give you that is just the problem. They'll make you work your way up to it. And you're going to use the previous part. So whenever you're looking at these more challenging parts, don't get put off. Think, OK, well, how do I use these previous parts to help me? Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Uh, lots of people would have done the step exams, in fact, in the last week or so. Um, so both step two and step three. So congratulations if those went well. I heard that they were kind of difficult tests. And if you are looking to apply to Cambridge for maths in the future, do get in touch. Link in the description below. I help students all across the globe uh, study maths or maths related subjects at Oxford and Cambridge. And over 80% of my stud students, students, students end up receiving offers. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.